Today we're going to try to answer our EQ, which asks you to explain how you would find the perimeter and area of a figure. Um, I know that you have had some experience finding the perimeter and area, probably of rectangles. Can anyone tell me what I would need to do to find the perimeter of this rectangle? You add up the outside? Yes, you would add up the outside, and by adding up the outside, you would find all the sides. So if this side is 4 inches, this side is also going to be 4 inches. If this side is 6 inches, this side is also going to be 6 inches. So I'm going to fill that in here. Oops. And first I'm going to have 6 plus 6, which is 12. And I'm going to add that to 4 plus 4, which is 8. And that is going to give me what? 20? It is going to give you 20. 20 what? Inches. 20 inches. Always remember to include your units. So for my perimeter, I'm going to say that it equals 20 inches. Now, when I'm finding the area, I want to find all the stuff that's inside. For the perimeter, we found what was along the rim. But right now, we're finding all of the stuff that's inside. And you can actually think about filling this up with little squares, just like you would in a multiplication problem. So I would have four little squares going down the side and six little squares going across this way, all filled up with squares. So I can think of it as a multiplication problem in that way by just multiplying this side by this side. What would I get if I multiplied 4 by 6? 24. I would get 24. So I would say 4 times 6 equals 24. Now remember I said you can think about this being filled up with little squares. That's area. It's going to be square. So when I include my units, it's not just going to be 24 inches. It's going to be 24 inches square. So that's how we write our answer. Doing it with the rectangle is easy because we can think of it for area just as the base times the height. And I'm going to go ahead and put that formula down for you, base times height. But a parallelogram, it looks a lot different from a rectangle, so it must be a different strategy too, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It looks like it would be, but what if I took this side and I cut it off and I added it to this side? It's the same amount of area, right? It's a rectangle. But now it's a rectangle. So actually, I can use the same strategy for a parallelogram because a rectangle is also a parallelogram. So for this one, 4 times 6 is going to be? 24. 24. 24 inches what? Area is squared? Area is squared. Think of filling this with a bunch of little squares. So 24 inches squared. Huh, that parallelogram had the same area as this rectangle, even though they look different. Okay. But what about this triangle? Does it look even close, like it has the same amount of area as this parallelogram or this rectangle? No. It's no. a different shape. It's a, it's a much different shape. Now, what if I made a copy of this triangle and I added it to the end? What do I have now? It looks like the other one. It looks like the other one. It looks like the parallelogram that I had. So, this triangle right here is how much of the whole thing? It's half of the picture. It's half of the picture. So, if I wanted to find the area of a triangle, first I would have to say half of the whole thing. So, one half times the base times the height 
is going to give me the area. So we first said that the area of the whole thing was going to be 24. Who can tell me what half of 24 is going to be? 12. It's going to be 12. 12 what? Inches. Inches. <gasps> squared. Squared. 12 inches squared. So now, let's go back here. We said for a parallelogram, it was the same as the rectangle, so base times height. For the triangle down here, it's half of the picture, so one half times base times height. as the other one? It's the same. Rectangles and squares are actually parallelograms, so all we need is one formula. So we're going to open that up, and we're going to write that the area is base times height. That's for the parallelogram, base times height. And we know that the perimeter is just add up all the sides. So we can, if you want, write a note that the perimeter is at all sides. For the circle, we're going to leave that blank for now. We're going to fill that in tomorrow. For the trapezoid, we're going to fill in this formula. B1 plus B2, which is the first base plus the second base, divided by 2. All of that in parentheses because that's what we do first. And then we take that and we multiply that by the height. For the perimeter, we just add up all the outside sides. So you can write the same note if you want to. Triangle is one half times base times height. So you're going to write that in there. And perimeter, same thing that we've been saying for all of these other figures. Now that you have finished your fortune teller, you can practice with yourself, with your friends, with your family, with strangers on the bus to help you memorize these formulas. And you can also use them in class for the next activity that we're going to do. Each of you have been given a worksheet. And it has 10 problems on the front, Ten problems on the back. What you guys are going to do in your groups of four is you guys are going to choose half of the problems to do right now. You guys need to divide up your tasks. Is it fair if I do all the triangles and Susie does all the rectangles? No, because Susie doesn't get any practice with triangles. So we want to have at least one parallelogram, at least one triangle, at least one trapezoid problem, 
and this is a timed challenge. You guys are going to have five minutes to complete this. The first three teams who finish will get points, and those points will be used later in the class for rewards. And I'm going to be coming around and checking to make sure that you are showing your work and that you are understanding how to use these formulas correctly. Are there any questions before we begin? You may begin. All right, now that we are finished with our team challenge and I have found my three winners, um, we have just about enough time to come back to our EQ. So who can explain to me how I find the perimeter of a figure? Perimeter, the outside. It's the outside. You're going to actually find the rim. So add all of the sides together. Right now, I don't have all of the measurements for you for the outside for all of these on your worksheets you did though. How about the areas? It's the same thing, just add everything all together, you're done? It's the inside. It's the inside, so we actually have to do some multiplication. And remember what I said about those little squares on the inside? That's what you add to your units. It's units squared. All right, for your final thing before you get to leave my classroom, we're going to do a ticket out the door. I want everyone to take out a sheet of paper right now. And you are going to create your own area and perimeter problem. Make sure that it is something that does not use huge numbers because we don't have time to break out the calculators and do huge calculations right now. So make it simple like the ones that I've made mine. And then you are going to trade your papers, have someone else solve it, and if they have trouble, you are going to help them. You get to play teacher right now. Are there any questions about my ticket out the door? You have five minutes. You may get started as soon as